I'm a happy man this morning. Do you know what I got yesterday? One pound fifty. One pound fifty for a baby gitzo. Okay, hasn't got a head, but anyway, one pound fifty in a flea market. <laughs> anyway, I bought myself as well a mirror lens. And I've always thought mirror lenses would be rubbish. Now we're going to see if they are. With all the programs for improving focus, etc., I think just maybe it might give a usable result. So we're going to try it, and at the end I'll tell you the advantages and disadvantages of a mirror lens. I'm sure there are more disadvantages than advantages. Well, here it is, the beast in question. Now, how to tell a mirror lens is very simple. Uh, I'll just get that in a bit of light. You get this strange little black thing in the centre. Well, that's very explicable because that is in fact the back of the mirror. Now, in the middle of the lens is a mirror. I know it looks strange, but anyway, every mirror lens has that. And I'll show you. Now, this is um, a 500 millimeter. It's F8. Now, that's fixed. You can't change it. It's always eight. And it's made by a company called Onar, if that's how it's pronounced and you can see that it's made in Japan. Now this was a very, very, very cheap lens. It also came with a converter that is this. Now this converter just fits on the back, screws into there, and that turns this 500 millimeter into a thousand millimeter lens. So it'll be interesting to see how it all works. Now let's see if we can see down the front. There you go, you can see there. Now turn it over. Try and get it in the centre of the image, Philip. Um, we turn it over and there we can see the mirror. And that's me waving to you. If we look down the other end, there you can see the mirror at the back of the lens. Then looking straight down from the front, we can see the aperture at the back of the lens, in the middle of the mirror. Well, I'm now going to show you a little drawing that will demonstrate how this works. On the front, we have a lens. There, you can see it. In the middle of the lens, we have this black thing. Behind that, there's a mirror. Now, that's all very strange. <clears throat> At the back of the lens, we have a mirror that goes all the way around, of course. I don't know if you can see it in there, but I think we've seen it before. Behind that, we have a lens. The light, in, this, in a normal lens, the light would come through like that and be upside down. With this lens, it comes straight, bounces back, therefore making it the right way up bounces back through this lens, which turns it upside down. So we've got this movement, bang, bang, bang. That doubles the focal length because light is moving twice the distance. Well, I've chosen a subject that I think is going to be fine. We've got behind me over there, if you can see it, a church. It's exactly a kilometre away, which is what, a sixth of a mile. So. Let's go and see what we can do with the 500mm and the 1000mm. Now we're using a crop sensor, so through the camera it gives the impression of being what? So would that be a 700mm and a 1600mm? But anyway, let's get on. Right, now as you see, got the 500 on. And we're just going to, there we are, got it back to where it was, and we're going to focus very carefully. And I'm going to now expose, and I'm going to expose with my hand on the tripod, stabilising the camera as much as I can. Even though I'm at, a, what, a 750th of a second, I stabilise it. Much better to do that, get a sharper image. And there we go, the result. Now, I'm absolutely flabbergasted, I think is the word. That looks incredibly good. 
Now, what I'm going to do is bring in the other one, uh, the other photograph, which is in fact a 35 millimeter, which brings it up to what a 50 millimeter. So we've got a 50 millimeter against uh, an 800 millimeter on the crop sensor. Now that looks extremely good, and I'm very, very impressed. Now, if I put something special in the way of sharpening on there. I would have thought that could have been very good. So for a lens that's really a low, low price one. Now this lens cost me around £75, including the extender. Now, of course, that was second hand off eBay. Not so bad as it looks, is it? Well, as you see, I've added the... Um, APS Auto Telephoto Times 2 made in Japan. I've added that between the lens and the camera. So we'll put that back and now this will give me the thousand millimeter. There we are. I've just got to get it all settled and straight. There we are. And do that final focus which is so important. There we go. And stay by the camera and shoot. There we go. That should give me quite a nice image. Now a thousand, look at that. Um, that looks a bit soft to me. But on the other hand, what an amazing magnification. It's uh, of course the 1600. It gives the impression of being 1600 on the crop sensor. That's the difference. Uh, with sharpening software i should think that would come up quite nicely and what a lens for paparazzi i don't know if you've looked at the price of 1600 millimeter lenses but um you'd be into the uh what, tens of thousands i would have thought well what do we think well i thought actually the results were remarkable for the price you compare it with uh, a 500 millimeter of any decent make i think it's pretty good the thousand millimeter well a good extender would probably uh, work as well now what are the things for and against mirror lenses well for them very simple very cheap and very light very easy to carry around now the big thing against them is that everything is manual Manual focus, manual exposure, manual ISO, uh, everything manual. A bit like we used to work in the 70s, 60s, 80s, and well into the 90s. In fact, I'm not sure I wasn't well into the 95s. Anyway, what you have to do is go right back to basics and use it like we used to work. Bye!